All right, let's do it. <sighs> I'm nervous. Let's count it down. Three. From what? From three. Know, five. This is a big decision. You have to count down from at least five. Five, four, three, three two, two, one. What? We did it. Do you feel any different? I feel dirty. <laughs> I need to go take a shower. Uh. Uh. All right. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So we have been doing YouTube for three and a half years now. We've also started two successful furniture businesses. And during that time, we have not taken a single cent of money for ourselves. Not from woodworking, not from YouTube, not from sales, not from sponsorships, not from programs, not from the stud stack, nothing. Believe it or not, we have not taken any money into our personal bank accounts. Before we left our full-time Air Force jobs and moved to Houston, we saved up and put ourselves in a position where we didn't have to take any of the money. We delayed quitting our jobs so that we could save up and finish getting out of debt. We drastically reduced our standard of living and got rid of everything we had that couldn't fit into our trailer. You know you're a YouTuber when literally your entire house is empty. Like you're sleeping on a mattress on the floor. However, your entire editing station is still up. Nothing's packed. Tower, monitors, everything. Camera's still out, tripods out. It was just one of those funny moments where I'm like, really? My entire fridge is packed. My mattress is on the floor. I don't even know if I have like towels for the next two days, but thank goodness our editing station is still down here and our ginormous monitor is still available for use. I have no bed. I have the world's largest monitor. And we also saved like crazy. Every spare cent we had just went straight into the savings account. So what did we spend all the money on that we made in our businesses? Well, in the beginning, there was no money. People tend to drastically overestimate how much money YouTubers can make. And it's usually not until your second or third year that you make any significant amount of money. Between software and tools to run the YouTube channel, there's really not much left. Even the first couple pieces of furniture that we built in, in the woodworking business, we used that money to, to pay for stuff in the YouTube channel. But yeah, after a while, we started selling some programs, we started up the stud stack, our furniture business really started taking off, so we made some money. We reinvested every last dime back into the businesses, between tools, clamps, new video editing computers, cameras, tripods, lighting, you name it. We were buying all of that with the money that we made from our businesses. Also, we started giving a lot of it away. We understood that this money came from other people, whether it was viewers or customers or whatever, we wanted to be good stewards of the money. So we started doing, you know, giveaways in the stud stack and supporting lots of other creators on Patreon and all sorts of stuff. We even went to WorkbenchCon and Maker Fair a couple of times just so we could start meeting other people. Then once we finally moved to Houston, we had to spend a lot of money in R&D, research and development, on our new products. We had to get new electrical in the shop. We had to get some new tools. We had to completely re-engineer our shop from the ground up to do production work. And then once the shop was laid out, we had to start carrying an inventory because Jenny was selling these cutting boards to real estate agents and we needed to have some ready to ship. So not only did we have to build and have boards on hand, we also had to have boxes and packaging. And I know you guys know this from looking them up, those custom printed boxes are not cheap. It doesn't matter what company you go with. And now we're paying for a storage unit and we're saving up for a commercial space and saving up to pay employees. <laughs> After all that, there's really not much left over. And we've done this for so long that now we think that taking a paycheck is like a negative thing. And it is to some extent because we're slowing the business down. If we stop reinvesting 100% of the money, the business isn't gonna grow as fast. And we finally reached a point where we asked ourselves, are we ever gonna take a paycheck? 
So as much as we want to reinvest in the business and hire employees and do all these great things, we're gonna need to take a paycheck very soon. Our savings are dwindling, cost of living is going up because of the pandemic. It's just, there's a lot of factors at play, even though we're faced with the pressure of some pretty big goals for our business. It took us a long time to get to this spot, but we finally realized that if we don't take a paycheck now, we probably never will. So we decided to start taking a paycheck. Just out of curiosity, down in the comments, tell us how much you think we paid ourselves on our first paycheck. So pause the video. And on your way back up, hit the subscribe button. It's right there. You're gonna pass it anyways. You wanna hear how our story plays out. And you know what? While you're there, hit the bell too. It's right there. It's easy. You'll be notified every time we drop a video. Don't let an algorithm keep us apart. I'll wait. Once you start taking a paycheck, things get a little bit tricky. If we woke up tomorrow and our YouTube channel was deleted and nobody ever bought a piece of furniture from us ever again, we'd be okay. It would hurt, but we'd be financially okay. But once you start taking money, you start to ask yourself questions and hesitate when you didn't before. You start to ask questions like, do we still make this YouTube video if we know it's not gonna do well? Shouldn't I spend my time selling to another realtor? I know that they'll buy it. Should I really try to branch out and find a new type of customer? What happens when this housing bubble pops and realtors don't buy cutting boards from us anymore? What if I invest all this time into R&D on a, on a piece of furniture and then nobody ends up liking it? Really scary questions. But I know one thing's for sure. If we stop taking risks and trying new things, our businesses are definitely going to die. We can't take so much money out of the business that we start to ask questions like that. We also couldn't afford to actually pay ourselves a full 60 to 70 hour work week paycheck, which the business couldn't handle that. And we understand that we're still investing our time into the business and not getting compensated for all of it. Like we're only taking a small drip. We've decided to take a small paycheck. Not a big paycheck, but a small paycheck. One day we'll have a big paycheck, but we have to start with a small paycheck before we get the big paycheck. Get the picture? We needed something so that we could practice taking money for ourselves, but not so much that it would change how the business operates. Eventually we'll work up to more, but we had to start with something. So we sat down on the couch and we decided we were just gonna go for it. No more waiting, no more just thinking about it. We were gonna take action and actually do it. All right, let's do it. <sighs> I'm nervous. Let's count it down. Three. From what? From three. Know, five. This is a big decision. You have to count down from at least five. Five, four, three, three two, two, one. We did it. Do you feel any different? I feel dirty. <laughs> I need to go take a shower. Uh, uh, all right. How do you feel? I don't know. I think I feel good. Like I'm, ex I'm excited. I don't know. Like I feel, I feel good because the business is to the point where we can like take a paycheck. But I also am like just constantly thinking in my head. I'm like, oh man, we could have used that money for like our next set of boxes. I could have, you know, put that toward the first month's rent in like a commercial space in the future. I that could have paid like how many months of our storage unit rent. I just, I don't know. Do you want to tell them how much it was? Yeah. Or no. Yeah, we can tell them. We can tell. Them. You can't help other people until you first help yourself. We can't expect to have a good structure set up to pay employees until we first learn how to set up that structure paying ourselves. It's kind of like that thing you hear on the airplane when they say, hey, if the oxygen masks drop down, put it, the mask on yourself first before helping anybody else put their mask on. I remember when I first heard that saying. I was 12 years old on my very first plane ride. I heard him say that and I thought it was crazy. I was a 12 year old. I didn't know much about big business or corporations or airlines or anything, but I was like, how selfish that you're gonna put your mask on before anybody else's and the airlines are telling you to do this? But now I realize as an adult, you're not helping anybody if you're passed out in the middle of the aisle because you don't have any oxygen to breathe. That metaphor applies to life. As much as we wanna help other people and we wanna hire employees and we wanna support other people you know, in their businesses or whatever they have going on in life, we can't do that unless we have the means and the structure set up for ourselves to be able to do that. You can't give if your bucket is empty. You can't help somebody else put on their oxygen mask until you put on yours first. 
I can't wait till we get to the point where we don't have to think about our own money like day to day. We don't want to become spoiled and ungrateful, but we just want to spend our time, energy, and efforts on pursuing our goals of building businesses that bring people together with their furniture or hiring employees and giving them a, a meaningful, fulfilling job where they can grow as people. And we will also want to focus our efforts on our content production and helping you grow and build character as people. But for this season of our life and for this season of our businesses, we needed to focus on bringing money in. And in this case, it wasn't money into the business, it was money in for us. And the first step is the hardest. And that first step for us was a small $500 a month paycheck. So if you wanna see our business journey since the beginning, click here. If you wanna use some of the tips and tricks that we learned to maybe start your own business, click here.